For more now on what investors should make of all these trade headlines, Catherine Rooney Vera, she's head of research and chief market strategist at Bull Tech Capital Markets. Our guest host, Andrew Lurie. CEO of Survey. He's got all sorts of polls and surveys on this. Which is good because I need to know. Um, we, we've, I did some research earlier, Catherine, I mentioned to Andrew. Uh, I found out it was December 10th. And that the I next. Out. Yeah, I did. And that. Uh, Sharp research. Yeah, yeah. I, I did it quickly. I uh, looked at the, the newspaper. December 15th, what do we know? What, what do you expect, Catherine? It matters, doesn't it? Yeah, talk is cheap, as you said, Joe, before, and, and the media seems to move really like a yo-yo with every facet of this negotiation, which it effectively is. Look, I think that the uh, um, USMCA is a very good precedent for a Chinese trade deal. We're going to get something. December 15th, it's a very good chance a tariff actually could happen. My question is, do the markets even react? If they react 2 to 5 percent, I think it's a buying opportunity. If we get that completion of the tariff scheme... Because what will subsequently come if we get the tariffs and if the markets react to the downside, Joe, is more likely than not um, words coming out from both sides, we're going to meet in early January. So my point is, if the markets fall because of a December 15th tariff hike, um, then it would be uh, a short-term buying opportunity and then uh, reaping the rewards once we get that phase one being discussed yet again in early 2020. Xander, the, when we started out, uh, and, and President Trump started out with this, I, I think the numbers were much lower. And, and we've, we've come around to the notion that, that maybe China is, is not our friend. And some people have actually, their stances that were already thought we need to do something, they've hardened their stances. Do you see that in the data? Or uh, from what I can tell, the, the public is wary of trade wars. But are they behind the idea of taking on China? So the China Here's issue the, is an here, interesting here. one. This is for Xander. Thanks. Sorry, Sorry okay. to interrupt. The China issue is an interesting one, and it tends to go directly down party lines. We just did a large survey of small business users, and what we're hearing is that small businesses are increasingly wary of the, of the trade war. They are increasingly hardened by the China issue. But they're bullish on spending. They're bullish on hiring. And while they think 65 percent of small business owners think prices are going to go up, only 38 percent of people think jobs are going to come home. And it really looks just like... Trump supporters on one end and folks... Well, it's weird because Trump when you said down party lines, a lot of times Democrats like Chuck Schumer are more... Hawkish on China. Are more hawkish on China. Well, that's the one Europe. issue where there does seem to be a lot of alignment that China has not been a friend to us in business for many, many years, especially out west in technology land where IP threats uh, have been under duress from China. So I do think there is some... There is some bipartisan support on pushing back on how China... Can I ask you a Zeitgeist us. question? We were talking about this yesterday when it came to what Jeff, Jeff Bezos' comments around Silicon Valley and Silicon Valley's role in working with the Defense Department against China. It's very interesting because there's so many companies and individuals, and you've, you're in Silicon Valley, who don't want to get into that business, right, because they say there's ethical issues and, and so many other things. But yet, I'm not sure, do they, do they or do they not support this sort of larger sort of war, what, either economic or cyber war with China? Well, it's, it's an interesting question when you see company walkouts out of companies whose company does business with the United States government. Right. It's a pretty challenging position where employees are putting their foot down to say that you can sell our software to XYZ different countries, but you can't... China. ...get into... Right. You can't well, license this, our this software to the United States This is why I was thinking about America, it, because... So. We you can enable China and deal with China, but, but, but we don't want... You know, don't give any money to our aerospace companies or our defense companies. Maybe we should throw rocks at ISIS next time well, they but, take over. But this is, no, but this is why I was, I was thinking about it, because of the China. It used to be, and we talked about this yesterday, and Josh Wolf had made the comment about uh, uh, Russia, you know, the U.S. versus Russia. There was a whole sort of view that you wanted to support. That's such a stupid uh, idea. There's always someone. No, There's no. always no, someone that we need to worry about. Or, worry about or we, how about building Patriot missiles no, no, for Israel's defense? Can we about build China some today? But the point is because of our economic. Uh, uh, well, you need to worry to China, about Iran. There isn't. There you need isn't, to worry about North Carolina. It isn't in the zeitgeist in the same way. That's uh -huh. what I was asking. Becky about. usually occupies this. Yeah, yeah, no, no, negotiating. Yeah, yeah, no. no, I do think that the, <clears throat> the political divide in America has now permeated business. And you do see 
employees getting particularly sensitive about doing business with right. a government that they don't necessarily support. And in Silicon Valley, we have a gov we have a, a population that largely does not support. But the, we heard that, that the, these they're like 60s activists. I told you I, I watched Easy Rider again, and the guy doing the Tai Chi with the he had a millennial beard, a millennial haircut. He was spewing millennial. Uh, trite, ridiculous, idealistic, unworkable salute. They're well, you, the same. They're the same, but they grow up, hopefully, okay, eventually. Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I knew you were going to say, okay. You've been watching but, too much Silicon Valley. Uh, uh, yeah. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, really? No, he, no. He's on that show, too. Which guy? Can this I jump in here, Joe? Described. I just yeah, have yeah. to. I don't, I, I just have to add something in here. Apart from partisan politics, and I think your millennial comments are, are always hysterical, but just let, let's just look at the data here. December of last year, the market fell 20%. The market fell because the trade apocalypse was supposed to take down not just the U.S. economy, but the global economy. What have we seen since then? Import prices dropping, right? right. Inflation decelerating, real wages gaining. The U.S. consumer has not felt the pinch that everyone said she was going to feel because of Trump's tariffs. And this is not a partisan issue. This is the fact that if you look at the data, 20 percent of what the U.S. consumes, both for imports of goods and services, is imported, of which 20 percent comes from China. These numbers are insignificant for the U.S. economy. They're significant for the Chinese economy, which is 30 percent of their GDP is tied to exports. In the U.S., it's 10. The point is, we have the negotiating power. I think something is going to get done. And I think we need to be wary of overestimating and exaggerating the impact of tariffs on the U.S. economy. So, so from uh, top down, you're fairly bullish on, on the extension of, of the rally that we're seeing then in stocks. Yeah, I think there's I think there's other risks. I think the manipulation of, of risk assets by global central banks is a huge risk. Negative interest rate policy. Look, that's a huge risk. Is it a near term risk? I don't I mean, it's a it's a risk. It's going to come home to roost. The other risk that I see is the Fed could maybe not cut and not sound as dovish. Doesn't need to be. The other mm -hmm. risk is, of course, politics. You could get a really left winger come in, uh, clinch the nominee. That is not priced into the S&P at thirty one fifty. It's just not.